All right, welcome chef friends. I'm so glad you decided to join us to learn more about an exciting new offering called Chef Desktop. I lead the product operations team here at Chef. My name is Virginia Wynn, and I'm here today with the Chef Desktop team to share what the team has been up to over the last few quarters. We're gonna to start today by giving you an overview of the offering, an exciting demo so that you can see it all in action, and then we'll wrap with some stories of how some of our early adopter customers have gained tremendous value from this offering. Now, before we get started, for those of you joining live, remember that we're all here for you. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to submit them in the chat window. So first up, I'd like to introduce a very special team member to the Chef Desktop team. His name is John McCray. He is a software development engineer for the Chef Desktop team, and he's been with Chef for seven years. Um, hey, John. Hey, Virginia. How are you? I'm good. Now, you had a different role before this one. Tell us about your previous role, and if you could share some of the origins of how the Chef Desktop offering came to be. Sure. So a long time ago, I was IT manager here at Chef, and we had a number of unique challenges around how best to manage the laptops and the desktop computers. Uh, we wanted to enforce some basic policies and, and, and some security practices in the laptops. Like, for example, we wanted to have a uh, file vault installed and running on all the Macintoshes. And we wanted to make sure we had some apps pushed out for all the different users. But at the same time, we wanted to be, you know, unobtrusive, as it were. Um, a number of our staff are, are developers, and so we wanted to make sure we weren't overly impacting their, their work environment. But at the same time, 70% uh, of our staff are remote, and so we needed some kind of a mechanism to uh, reach out to all these laptops, bring them under management, and modestly enforce some very basic uh, processes and, and security practices on, on the devices. So uh, we started off with Jamf. Uh, Jamf is a great product. Uh, those guys do a great job. And initially it did a marvelous job for us, locking down all the, uh, the policies and profiles that we needed deployed. Uh, but what we found also was that um, Jamf was a little far reaching in, in how it uh, implemented uh, a number of the practices and security things we needed to have implemented and sort of locked out some kinds of um, uh, flexibility we needed, right? And so what we ended up doing then was uh, falling back to using Jamf to deploy bash scripts that got us the kind of control we needed for our environment. And that worked great. And then as we're sort of thinking about what's next, um, we're recognizing that maybe there's a better way we could do this, right? If we're just using Jamf to manage bash scripts, is there, is there some better way we could do this? And we're thinking about how we could do it with Chef. And that's about the time then the Mac admins community reached out to us and said, hey, look, you know, we're doing this with Chef ourselves. You could do it too. And so we switched over to using uh, Chef to manage our, our devices with. And that really got us a really, really robust and rich experience around giving us the, the control we needed and the flexibility we needed at the same time uh, to get our, our laptops in compliance but not be intrusive into the user experience. And really what happened then and there was that uh, customers started asking about how they could do it too. Right. And so then we were talking to the customers about how they're doing it. And, and really we're thinking about it as being a really uh, interesting developer focused experience at that point. And the problem there is that because it is developer focused, it ignores the windows and uh, uh, Mac community members who are uh, more console, not console, who are more uh, GUI focused. Right. And so then we thought about how we could, how we could make the product work a little bit better for, people who are not console focused. And that's where Chef Desktop really took, you know, uh, came into being, where we just decided to build uh, a robust set of tools that people who are, who are not normally console users could be uh, effective and uh, get, the, pro, uh, get the, the security best practices and uh, the settings they needed deployed to their environment in, in a really easy and timely fashion. So, Really what we ended up with then is a comprehensive uh, set of tools for Windows, Mac, and Linux desktops. And then uh, Chef Desktop provides a lightweight, uh, a lot of lightweight flexibility to deploy your apps and services and tools and make, the, make life better for the Windows, Linux, and Mac admins. Cool. 
Well, John, that is such a special part of Chef's history. So I really appreciate you stopping by to share that with all of us. Um, and also, thanks for the expertise and unique perspectives that you're bringing to the Chef Desktop team. You're, you're awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Next, I'd like to turn it over to Alan Baptista and Nick Rykar. They're in our marketing department, and they're going to share an overview of Chef Desktop and give a demo. Alan, why don't you kick us off? Thank you, Virginia. Uh, welcome everyone to Chef Conf 2020. I'd like to be the first one to welcome Chef Desktop. As you know, we're announcing this today. But before we go into a little more the product, I'd like to cover a few of our stats and a few of the market driving forces that really has, has driven uh, Chef to develop this, this offering. Well, there's basically three that we were gonna cover. Automation, second was is, is that infrastructure is everywhere. And thirdly, is this post-COVID reality of having a work from home environment in many, many organizations. With regards to automation, we have gone through our, for, for that matter, Chef in the, on our 11 years of existence has always been a, a, a big proponent to, towards automation. But in this case, Gartner says that by 2025, they expect that more than 90% of enterprises will have some form of automation architect, less than 20% today. So this, the, the role of, of automation is here to stay and is clearly a strong a driving force within organizations' IT infrastructure. Gartner also identifies top trends that are impacting infrastructure and operations. The, they have one trend that they talk about, which is infrastructure is everywhere, and so is your data. The, in, in this um, kind of trend, they say that by 2022, 60 enterprises will have some level of IT infrastructure will focus on the centers of data and not the traditional data centers. What does that mean is really they're moving the data and the workload closer to the users, while understandably will impact the, the importance of the organizations to properly manage and secure those endpoints. In this case, we're referring to as laptops and desktops and even some level of kiosk workstations. And lastly, with this new COVID reality, um, and we know that Centers for Disease Control has recommended those work from homes. And this is a survey actually really from, from Willis Towers, where they surveyed 158 U.S. companies. And they talk about um, that over uh, nearly 50%, I think it's 46 actually, percent of the organization see that there's, they have implemented or in their, they're, they're in the process of implementing some level of work from home from, due to their COVID-19 reality. So Nick, the, the, we've, we've seen actually organizations driving towards two major areas. And we, lock, we, we talk about driving, looking for efficiencies, how organizations are really driving to, to, uh, to want to eliminate those manual time consuming steps that they usually take to configure and maintain the fleet, the, their fleet of thousands of workstations. And I know you're gonna show, showcase some of the efficiencies there. Any, any other thoughts on, on how organizations are looking to efficient to, 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 to uh, efficiently manage their, their, their fleet? Yeah, and I think a lot of it's not necessarily new to what Chef does, but sort of new to this uh, specific domain where uh, it really comes down to, we've got a lot of uh, high expertise within IT organizations, but a lot of the things that they're doing uh, are very rote and easy to sort of make push button. Uh, and even if the task itself isn't particularly complicated, even taking something as simple as setting screensaver policy and turning that into an automated process frees up time for building out whatever needs to happen next and ensuring that that's been done at scale as we have more and more endpoints that need to be managed. Yeah, essentially I think organizations are really seeking an easier and maybe even automated way to establish those processes and, and maintain their tooling, right? Their endpoint management. Yeah, yeah. Well, There's the uh, the old do it if you want to do it fast, do it alone. If you want to do it, uh, you know, uh, well, do it for do it together. Uh, kind of uh, the same concept applies to automation, I think. And I think one area that more and more um, alludes to the to one of those stats that we see uh, is really how organizations are drive trying to reduce risk, really in 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 managing their IT resource uh, tool set. Right, the, the, the IT resource managers are finding it difficult to deploy and consistently manage those thousands of, of devices that they're having under their control. 
they need to find a dynamic way to enforce that enterprise security. And, and some organizations even have to follow some level of industry standards like the CIS benchmarks that we currently support actually. Um, they need also, and more and more, I think with the zero trust concept is one that I, I'm really excited to hear about, where we're seeing that organizations have to really create somewhat of, of, of risk profiles, not only for the user, but actually for the device. So we, you, we identify the user, and then we have to explicitly authorize the device to have access to what they're trying to do. Any thoughts there? Yeah, I think it's it's in particular endpoint management, there's a big balance between sort of control and flexibility. I don't have everything sitting in the data center, so I can't uh, have everything stay put for me to manage, but I also don't want to lock things down so far that my actual, you know, employees and colleagues aren't able to get work done. So the question becomes, how do we configure things while still letting folks do their day job without having to worry about what's actually configuring things in the background for them? Yes, very good points. So drum roll here, next slide, I wanted to introduce Chef Desktop. It's essentially our way how to drive efficiency through automation. As you're well aware, Chef is really driving that automation. You're able to gain control over those IT resources that you're managing. And thirdly, you're able to reduce security and compliance risk through that, con that continuous compliance that we've seen in many other of our solutions. Now we've applied into the desktop area. In terms of uh, efficiencies is one area. And the next slide, I think we're gonna go deeper into each one of those. But I'm really excited to kind of convey the idea that, that we are doing what Agile has done for application development in terms of efficiency. What DevOps is doing for the operation side of things is what we're trying to do for the IT resource management. So really just trying to streamline that, that, that concept through code which is an important aspect because once it's codified, you're able to make that into somewhat of a pipeline process, which can be automated, is extensible, and can also be very, very scalable from one device through many or through your entire fleet. So it allows you for a level of efficiency that the traditional point and click really don't allow you to do, right? Any thoughts in terms of how we help or how Chef Desktop actually helps drive this efficiency through automation, Nick. Yeah, and I think it really sort of expands on what Chef's already been doing in the infrastructure management space, but speaking to those elements that are unique to desktop management. We talked a little bit about the control, and certainly when I'm managing those uh, user machines, I don't uh, have the ability to take SSH or WinRM access to those machines for granted. So being able to sort of look at those sort of use case specific needs, but still apply that same uh, automation principle that uh, translates beyond where I have that repeatability and flexibility that code provides. That's a great point. And more exciting, our product management team just loves this dashboard. So the next slide is really where you're able to gain control and visibility. It really enables this continuous visibility into the configuration status of your entire fleet which includes platforms, their types, and how they're structured, or even different attributes within, that, within the, the, the platform. You're able to drill down into views and layers. You're able to group like, like information, which allows you to have a comprehensive view of your uh, laptop and desktop estate. You're able to check on the desktop or laptop usage, their, their current, or any pending errors that need to be addressed and obviously correct those errors and, this, and, and maybe even necessary configuration drifts that you have from that case. So we're really, really excited to showcase this, uh, this visibility. I think you're gonna cover that a little bit more in terms of your um, demo as well. So I, I wanted to move further into this continuous compliance, which I think is our strongest differentiator with, with our solution, which no other vendor I believe has this level of, of commitment to compliance at the endpoint devices. It's a way for you to consistently enforce security standards, such as CIS benchmarks, which you see that table right there, or even company specific policies, which allow you to uh, create an extensibility of what are the benchmarks already created. You're able to modify those, those parameters, but allowing you to maintain not only the, the industry benchmarks, but also company-wide security standards you're able to really create this custom profile to meet 
your customer, your custom meet specific needs. Any thoughts there in terms of our compliance coverage for, for the uh, fleet? Yeah, so I think like again, this sort of expands on you know some of the existing compliance content that we've built, we've been building, and uh, wraps around that core theme where it's before we can even know whether we've configured things properly, we need to know what target we're trying to hit. Uh, and so with sort of the pre-baked profiles we provide in CIS benchmarks, we uh, save you from having to write those from scratch, but also provide you the tools to do those things that are unique to your organization all in one place. That's a great point. So the next slide is really a summary of the Chef desktop features. We do support different platforms all through a one tool. So we support the, uh, Mac OS, we support Windows and Linux. So a great way for you to have a single tool to, to uh, support and, and configure and manage your entire fleet independent of their OS. But some of the exciting features that we are uh, rolling out. The most, the, the, I think two of the ones that I like the most, one of them is this zero touch enrollment and provisioning. I think it's something that you'll showcase there. I really love how that works. And the other one is really the easy onboarding, leveraging that chef content that you've seen before in terms of the compliance portion, but also the configuration standard uh, that we have in, in pre-packaged chef curated content. And even for those that are not accustomed to our language, you have a YAML template that you can easily um, use to, to start your process a lot more efficiently, a lot more quicker than you typically just click and, 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 and push out to single uses. You, you're able to, to really leverage that efficiently. Anything that excites you here? I mean, honestly, those are two of uh, the stars of the show for me as well. Uh, in particular, if I can't take, you know, SSH and WinRM for granted, then I need a way to configure these machines. And I'm not necessarily even going to be able to count on whoever is using that machine being able to go and run the chef client. So being able to integrate this into like Active Directory and MDM solutions really lets me ship a laptop to someone, have them turn it on, and then within a matter of minutes, have it configured to my organization standards. And then on the flip side, you mentioned the YAML, the YAML templating. If I'm the person who's uh, dictating that policy and I need to set the standard for my organization, it gives me a great way to get started and use all of those new resources that we've provided without necessarily also having to learn a new language at the same time. So we can start out with uh, YAML. We provide example YAML recipes with uh, the content we provide. Uh, and if you need to get fancier, do some cool codified things like if statements and the like, well, the chef language is there for you to move on to. And it's really extensible too. So that's really exciting part of that. I know you guys are gonna go into a little bit more deeper uh, use case coverage, but before we do that, I wanted to just highlight three areas of customers that we've seen where they've seen a lot of control ca uh, capability, uh, a, a true compliance uh, uh, coverage and their efficiency uh, coverage there. So Chef Desktop has allowed many of our customers to configure their laptops and desktops according to their specific employee needs or group of employee needs with these risk profiles and these, these configuration profiles that we talked about. In terms of compliance, we talk about how uh, Chef Desktop has allowed for uh, our customers to maintain their desired state, control drifts, trace, and, and have auditable changes that can be easily converted into a report and, and handed over to, to, an audit, uh, to an audit team. Uh, in terms of the efficiency, actually, Chef uses our own solution. We, we drink our own champagne, for that matter, to really manage our laptop and configuration, uh, a laptop and desktop fleet through configuration and the compliance capability that we have to maintain our devices under continuous compliance. Now to the, uh, to the use case. Now it's time to see Chef Desktop in action. To kick things off, we're going to have a look at some of the content that's been added for this release. Chef Desktop builds on Chef's existing infrastructure automation tools and provides a variety of new resources custom tailored for desktop and laptop management. This includes resources for managing encryption, password and screensaver settings, application and patch management, as well as a variety of user access controls. While these resources provide a way for you to easily create and automate desktop policy unique to your organization, Chef has also provided example recipes so that you have references on hand for how to format and configure that policy. We can see here our example recipe from taking care of Windows management. 
Since Chef Desktop is built on a foundation of existing Chef tools, that means we also have access to the huge library of resources and features already available within Chef Infra. This includes YAML recipe support that was added in Chef Infra Client 16, and the included example recipes are available both in the Chef language as well as YAML, as seen in the Mac OS example here. Like all good automation, Chef Desktop is designed for test-driven development. Here, we're going to be using Test Kitchen to take a look at my Mac OS recipe. Because Chef Desktop is built on a foundation of Chef Infra, it means any of the existing test and deployment workflows we use for our infrastructure and servers can be used here for desktops. As we converge our test Mac OS system, we'll be able to see exactly what policy is being implemented. As with all Chef Automation, this policy is designed to be rerun and will only change items that are not already in their desired state. This means we can have the systems we manage check in at whatever polling interval makes the most sense for our organization to ensure that all of our users have the most up-to-date versions of our applications and policies configured. Once our converge is complete, we'll get a summary of exactly what Chef Infra Client changed, and we can run any associated tests before uploading our cookbook to a Chef Infra server. Because Chef Desktop is built on a foundation of Chef Infra, we can bootstrap new machines over SSH and WinRM just as we could servers. However, desktops and laptops often aren't set up to be accessed in this way, so we'll also need to make sure we have a way to bootstrap new machines in an unattended and automated fashion. To facilitate this, we've provided a few zero-touch options for bootstrapping new systems with Chef Desktop. This includes uh, integrating with things like Active Directory and MicroMDM. And here I have a brand new uh, Windows machine that's authenticating with AD. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with my NRICAR at Northwind Baking account. We'll go ahead and hit next, and we do sort of our standard uh, network login, and we'll get our initial machine set up rolling. Now, as we go through this process, it's also going to be running the uh, Chef Infra client to apply all of our policy standards. Now, at this point in the setup, I'd be setting my pin and waiting for first initial configuration to complete. But like any good TV chef, I'm going to jump right to the cooked meal and with a little movie magic. Now I can see that my system is set up, but how can I tell if it's been configured properly? Well, one of the things that my uh, desktop recipe set up was a screensaver policy. So let's go ahead and see whether or not that's been implemented. I can see here the screensaver set to mystify and that the wait is set to 20 minutes and uh, on resume it makes me log back in. I note that these are both not configurable by me, but thankfully my admin has let me change the uh, screensaver itself if I want to add some of them bubbles to my life. If I want to have a look at the full array of changes that were made, my systems are sending their data to Chef Automate, where I can take a look at everything that was done on each individual configuration run. We go ahead and look at the details here. Here are all of the things that happened during this setup. We can see the screensaver configuration that we looked at, as well as all the registry keys that were set and other scripts that were run and user permissions set throughout the course of this run. Now, in addition to the content and resources we've covered, Chef Desktop is launching with a new dashboard in Chef Automate. This dashboard is designed to collect the data specific to what we care about most in desktop and laptop management. In particular, we can't count on our machines being persistent like we can with servers, and instead are going to have users bringing them on and offline, checking in from home or on coffee shop networks, and we need to, at the very least, be able to tell at a glance uh, how much of our fleet is running the latest configuration policy we've defined. To kick things off, we'll see a daily check-in aggregator, where I can see how many of my machines have checked in today, how many have not, uh, all compared to the total number of machines being managed. We can see this same data as a trend graph, where I can see the check-in history over time, view the percentage of systems that checked in on any given day, and change the length of time being tracked for easy management. We can view that data organized by time since last check-in, so we can see machines that haven't checked in a long time over a month versus those that haven't checked in recently but are just a few days out of date. 
Finally, we're able to see what our top errors are and can take a look at both how many systems are seeing each individual type of error, as well as drill into the details, which of our systems see each error. And even on a server by server, or I guess in this case, uh, desktop by desktop basis, what those system details are and their individual check-in history for when things converged successfully, when there were failures, and when the status was unknown. Maybe a machine didn't check in on a particular day. From there, we can go ahead and view all of our high-level details or drill in to the error specifics. And that concludes our desktop demo. I look forward to seeing what you all do as we start expanding our infrastructure as code beyond servers and onto desktops, laptops, and more. Hey, Nick. Well, thanks so much. It was amazing to see the visibility and control that we're providing. I know the team's been really excited and hard at work to create that incredible desktop experience, and they want to see how well it will be received by our customers. Now, we do have a handful of customers who got early access to Chef Desktop, and I'd like to check in with Stephen Wise from Customer Success and Jeff Vogt from our sales team to share their own perspectives. Hey, Stephen, are you there? Hey, Virginia, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks for having us and really happy to be here today. And Nick, that, again, that was a great demo. And, you know, as, as you heard earlier uh, from John, this was an open source solution that, you know, our community was able to develop. And then we were able to productize to give a better, more robust experience for our customers. And that's really what we saw from a demand aspect of our customers coming to us. And as Virginia alluded to, we've had a lot of customers come to us to get that early experience. And what I want to talk about from a customer success standpoint is that journey that the customers are able to go through now. Is not only are they able to leverage Chef or Desktop to get that user experience and be able to have that end-to-end -end solution for them, is they're able to get the best of breed advice and technologies from us as we recommend what we other see from what we see from other global IT operations uh, across our customer base, as well as really take advantage of Chef for Compliance and auto, uh, Habitat and Automate to, real, to be able to give them a fully end-to-end -end solution that we really hit on as the coded enterprise. So Chef for Desktop is a great way to do that. And how we have that from a customer success standpoint is really we have that anchored with a lot of our elements in customer success, such as a customer success manager and a customer architect and our pro services team, really working hand in hand to be able to give you that advice and help you along that journey as you start to explore other things, such as how are you approaching the cloud? How are you approaching containers? What about our legacy applications? And what is the experience we want for our internal customers uh, to be able to have from an IT perspective? And so that is that whole customer journey that those customers have been able to come to us and have been able to experience so far. That's great, Stephen. It's, it's amazing to hear about that journey and see all of our products being woven together like that to create yep. that full chef experience. Yep. Thanks for that. Um, so next, I want to turn it over to Jeff. Um, Jeff, we've been hearing about a modern pattern of user authentication called zero trust. Can you give us some details on this? I'd love to. So I've been at Chef about three years and I work with the majority of Chef desktop customers today. And I hear a lot about the patterns that, you know, are kind of up and coming in the industry. So uh, there's a pattern called zero trust. It has been around for about 10 years and it came out of Forrester Research. It's also analogous to Google's Beyond Corp. And to understand what it is, uh, I think it's important to understand what traditional authorization looks like uh, in the sort of pre-zero trust world. So traditional auth looks a lot like your typical VPN. Uh, you provide a username and a password and you're on the network. Now, things like single sign-on have come up uh, and been very popular recently and you know, these are tools like Okta where you provide credentials uh, in a common authorization gateway before accessing your endpoints, your web services, uh, or VPNs. And what Zero Trust is, is an ad addition to that where that authorization engine can perform additional uh, rule-based validation based on uh, not just your credentials, but your user context, the device context. So this is data about your user and the device accessed in real time. So you might ask, you know, where does Chef fit into that? And, uh, you know, everybody knows the tool Chef and Inspect. Uh, well, Zero Trust 
works best with very rich device context. And Chef and Inspect can produce a ton of data about the device. So Chef is commonly used to, you know, harden these user devices and Inspect is commonly used to measure this data. Uh, when you use Zero Trust with Chef and Inspect, you are tying into the Chef Automate database during your authorization flow to decide whether or not to access, to allow access to a service based on did Chef check in recently? Um, did an Inspect run uh, with zero critical failed controls? And the combination of, of those types of data and the combination of uh, different rule sets based on how sensitive the resource is, is the most modern implementation of zero trust uh, that exists, you know, at any of our customers today. Thanks, Jeff. Well, Stephen, Jeff, super huge thanks to both of you. We really appreciate you joining us to share your knowledge and deep expertise today. Well, all right, everyone, that brings us to the end of this session. But before you go, we'd love it if you would sign up to join us for the Chef Desktop Webinar, which will be held on June 23rd. The registration link is right here. You can also learn more by visiting the Chef Desktop product page or read more on the Chef Desktop announcement blog, which was just released today. Very soon, we'll be dropping new modules in Learn Chef so you can even expand your knowledge more. I wanna thank you all for spending the last 30 minutes with us and hope you have a great rest of your day.